All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the 11th episode of our experience in Pokemon Insurgents. So this will be the first episode of the post game. So we just finished up the Elite Four. And first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk to the Pika Taxi here. He's going to give us the Pika Pad. It's basically a item that replaces your need for flying. So you no longer have to go find this guy or keep an HM user in your party. You're able to just use that item from anywhere. Next. We're going to go to Sonata City. Reason being, we're going to go teach our Meganium Giga Drain because Giga Drain is way better than Energy Ball in this game for playthrough purposes. Uh, it gives you some health back and that increases your sustainability tremendously. We did teach Giga Ball, Giga, we did teach Energy Ball during the Elite Four, but that was because it was available via TM. So we could teach it in the middle of an Elite Four challenge. But we don't want, we longer have to live like that. So we're going to do the better thing here. Um, what else? So speaking of the post game in Pokemon Insurgents, this has probably the best post game I've ever played in a Pokemon game. Um, it branches out, so it's not linear at all, like except for the very first part during this episode. It branches out so you could do multiple things. In different orders if you want to so first thing i want to do is go pick up our third starter or the third starter that was left on the table you're able to do that by challenging the professor here in the lab now she does have a serious team but her team is also a bit under leveled so you'll be able to take her out um i think i lose my first fight against her only because well you'll see i miss <laughs> uh grass whistle because of that she's able to set up rain dance and uh yeah with hydration happening i'm not able to you know get anything happening so but otherwise we're able to as long as we hit grass whistle go ahead and sweep her so mcginnigan's gonna land that grass whistle we're gonna go for calm mind calm mind up some more and then boom through the drain health down so this fight we've equipped a life ball instead of the uh megastone no reason why <laughs> just just chose to do so obviously stab moon blast would hit just a wee bit harder like it would definitely uh two shot this flare on here but we don't really need a two shot because it's going to do recall damage to himself we're able to get some healing back with life orb or excuse me with Giga Drain. So it's already paying off tremendously. If you go in one shot your enemy anyway, then you might as well heal from it, right? That dragon dance was a mistake, because that allows us to just straight one shot him. And last thing we got is Umbreon. almost knocks us out but it doesn't because we're within self ko range with our uh, life orb we go ahead and giga drain there and it works out with the crit so yeah because of that we are given the third starter that we didn't get earlier the one that's weak to our uh delta squirtle and this is actually a tremendous gain for us because delta charmander as you saw with its megastone it gains the ability knocked him and that ability does allow us to set nighttime. Now I'm going to gain that via Lunatone anyway, but I might end up with two Pokemon with Noctum on my team. We'll see. That was the original plan, but I wasn't tracking the the ability to get Delta Charizard uh, until a few weeks ago. So plans change. So now we're heading to where we were told to head at the end of the last episode, which is into the Crystal Caves. And then we're going to solve the puzzle again. It's not that bad of a puzzle. Now that I've learned it a little bit better. And then we're going to about go back to where we found Mew. And we'll get into a cutscene where we meet King Veseran. And he's going to tell us about the Timeless. So the Timeless are trainers. If you weren't paying attention during the uh, Giratina episode. Trainers that have been protecting the powerful crystal shards of infinite energy from giratina's uh brethren since like forever and uh yeah 
you've got to beat them in order to regain back the shards and become the actual auger of uh, the Torn region. So the first one we find is Cynthia. We go ahead and challenge her. Unfortunately, this is not as bad as the Elite Four because you are able to just straight up out level these guys. So because you can out level them, you can just set up with your strongest Pokemon and then choose to sweep them if you want to. Like Rose Raid, I'm kind of nervous about uh, doing Rose Raid here, but it's working out so far. And then this Star Chomp is obviously not prepared for a Moon Blast, even though it should know how to have it by now. Lucario, again. Moon Blast is like the only effective option here. So we go ahead and one shot it. And then the Kids is something that actually kind of scares me, but it doesn't actually resist Moon Blast, even though it's a fairy. So we just can go ahead and knock it out. And you can tell, like, this is her actual team from the game, except that she's giving them Mega My Loaded. And thankfully, we got Critical Hit, but I had knocked it out. And then, yeah, Spirit Team is weak to Moon Blast. So, uh, with Meganium, even without the Mega, just the Life Orb, we have clean swept both the Professor and the first member of the Timeless so far. And then, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and heal. Second member of the timeless we're gonna find. I don't even know this dude's name. Elaine. I think he's from uh another one of the fan games that this team did. Suzerain and them. So again, we're gonna start off with Grass Whistle. And then, you know, just set up and get ready to, to sweep. Or actually, we don't set up. We switch swap out to Michaela. Uh yeah. I forget. Every time I see Med Gross, I swap out to Michaela because that's like the one thing that uh, she can deal with very well, Metagrosses. And she's the one wearing the Megastone right now, so she's going to be able to utilize it very well. Unfortunately, she does get hit, but uh, as we break, Weavile comes out. I think Weavile is fast. No, it's not. Never mind. He went for the revive. It's been like a week since I played this, by the way. Um, I'm doing this voiceover in post, so some some of these things are going to surprise me. Sets up the stuff rock on me. That's unfortunate, but hopefully it doesn't end up being a problem. And end up like uh, shotting into the Minotaur with the armor on it. Charizard comes out, she's the belly drum. That was a mistake. And this is the second time in a row that uh or not the second time in a row. Uh but with the the professor with their their mega Charizard it chose a setup and then this mega Charizard chose a setup. It's unfortunate. Both times they, they set up instead of uh attacking because that prevented them from uh preventing the sweep. Alright. Some more healing. Now we're gonna go and look for next enemy. So this one's gonna be Suzurain. Um, Suzurain, I think, is a self insert of the lead developer for this game. So uh, the Suzurain is the name of the developer, the primary developer behind Pokemon. Games. So if you'll go look on the forums, a lot of the uh, developer stuff is from him. So we do get one shot in the beginning here, unfortunately, by Sludge Wave. But we, we continue pressing because, obviously, why not at least play out the battle and see how it works out. So, that hurts, but we can get one shot back. And, yeah, that's doesn't make any sense. Kingdra's... Draco Meteor one shot at me is actually a surprise. I did not expect it to one shot me. But we send a Rose Raid. Rose Raid has 
uh, New Moon and Moon Blast, so I'm expecting this to be a nice little sweepy sweep. We do get a crit on the Kingdra, I don't think we needed it though. After this comes out, it's out for the Moon Blast and it's going down. Baby Blast comes out, that's where Dark Pulse comes in. Surprisingly, does not one shot, even with being super effective in the darkness. But yeah, I guess that shield form is really, really tanky, huh? And even without darkness, we're hitting just a little bit over half, so that's nice. We are toxically poisoned, though, so we may end up going down before the end of this. He sends out Mega Jirachi on me. That is actually incredibly scary, by the way. Mega Jirachi is a very, very powerful Pokemon. And then last one is going to be this Wall Rain. We're not able to survive the poison. And then we're going to send out something to just try to clean up a little bit. Pretty sure it's going to be Flygon, huh? This Flygon has a Rock Slide. Oh, actually, Earthquake makes more sense. Because Earthquake is uh, what you call it. Surprised he didn't go for Ice Move there. Yeah, Stab Earthquake does 150 damage, and Rock Slide, with Super Effective, does 150 damage. But it's also able to miss, so that's why I went with Earthquake there. I'm smarter, I'm smarter in real time with the game than I am in post, apparently. So, King Vezrin himself, we finally found him. So for all the times that he uh, gave us just a little bit of lore and ran away, it's time, for him to, it's time for us to run his fade, right? And then we're going to miss. Oh, speaking of running his fade, by the way, this guy is going to be the only member of the timeless, I guess, spoiler alert, that gives us significant problems. So you can see I switched to Meganiumite because I want that uh, magic bounce. The first time I forget to Mega Evolve, and that's going to be a recurring thing too. But yeah. So I always go for a Calm Mind first, and then I try to put him to sleep with Grass Whistle. Because I do want him to try to put up rocks, but I don't want him to uh, actually, you know, get a hit on me. Because if he lands a hit on me with Iron Head, he will knock me out. Especially if I get the uh, special drop with Moonblast, and then he gets a attack drunk because of his defiant nature that's going to give him even more damage against me which will guarantee that one hit so um yeah at this point you're just seeing me trying and failing to actually get him done and it's not working uh so in real time this is about a six minute process i think i trimmed it down to about just over 60 something seconds for you guys so we are about to be at the tail end of that right now while i've been yapping and yapping on um yeah I, I would have never guessed that B-Sharp would have been the first Pokemon that really gave Mega Meganium this hard of a time, but it did. Alright, so here's our special one. So, he sets up Stealth Rock on himself. We go to plus two. Moonblast him. We found out that he has a, a focus sash, which I probably should have started attacking earlier than that, but it's fine because the second time we knock him out. We already set up some sleep and we've worked this hard to get here, so we're not pitching out. Unfortunately, we do. Uh, we do not manage to get the one shot with Stab Moonblast, but this is just regular poison, so we're not as worried about it, especially with our uh, Mega Drain. But we're not going to be able to use Mega Drain effectively against Sleeper, so we need to have a different Pokemon come in. Victini's going to come in, and we're not really going to be able to do anything against this either because it is going to be faster than us. You see, I try to go for the Mega Drain, and I, I just don't get it. Alright, however, Michaela is better than Victini, so it is going to be able to knock it out. Kabalion's going to come out. We have, we do have super effective damage against it, but it has super effective damage against us as well, and it gets to on that. 
so our Michaela is going to go down and now uh, we're looking around I'm pretty sure I'm going to choose Flygon nine times out of ten I'm not choose High Dragon though that's just High Dragon okay it didn't matter which one I choose I'm just going to choose the Earth Groom from the ground one. and now we're going to swap out probably Vespaquin because it has Thunderbolt yep so we're going to use Delta Vespaquin Thunderbolt and we're going to hope it actually knocks this thing out and it does perfect the last one out is going to be Salamence and I don't even know if I actually have to swap yeah no I don't yeah we're, we're going to leave it in and we're going to use that Dazzling Gleam twice to knock it out Or more than twice actually shoot uh so here's the problem i'm being kind of stubborn i need to use calm mind i just am kind of scared to do so <laughs> because i don't want it to do something after roosting and actually knock me out because vesper quinn's not all that tanky but i'm running out of pp so i need to do something and we're able to get two shot after mining once so the sweep was on route it just needed we just needed just a little bit of luck to happen all right so next next victim is going to be steven stone you guys remember him from uh rb or it's not rby gs uh not gsc either uh rse yeah, from Ruby Sapphire and Emerald. Yeah, we're going to take him out. Now, I'm expecting this Carbink to use Stealth Rock because it is a rock type and it's a lead. Obviously, it does, so we're doing pretty well to start with. We do get the Lucky Grass Whistle, so we don't have to have any necessary resets. We go for Calm Mind, we go for Giga Drain because you know it's going to work. And then he's going to go for a full restore, if I'm not mistaken. I'm thinking way too hard about this because he is definitely just going to go for full restore. But that's fine. We're still going to do it again. I don't know if Steven Stone actually uses Carbink on his team in game in any of the new generations. Obviously, he didn't ha have access to it in uh, the real version. I don't know if he used it in Oraz, though. Uh, I have to double check that, see if you're using the AIs. It's going to send out Agron. That's not going to be a problem for us because Agron is just another Pokemon. Uh, and also, its special defense is nowhere near as high as its defense is. So we're going to use our mutually effective Giga Drain against it. Uh, so, here's a, our problem point. We are set up, but we are going to swap because we know that Meganium versus Medgross is not a good match up for me right now because I don't have hidden power bar. so we swap out and we go for dark pulse yeah okay I didn't want to prove myself wrong accidentally it's like I'm pretty sure I go for dark pulse here get the dark pulse off however Mega Meganium is just a little too strong for us I do like the fact that he has a shiny Mega Meganium or Mega Medgross uh but our Hydreigon is faster. I'm gonna follow up with the Surf against this Aerodactyl after eating a very, very hurtful Life Orb boosted Earthquake from it. And we're gonna swap out again because I don't like wasting revives against this uh against the, this guy. I think we go yeah we go for Vesper Quinn here because it has Stab Fire. By the way, if you see me back and kind of slow in the decision making process, understand that I'm, I'm making decisions in real time. I might know what those outcomes are now, so I'm just telling you, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. But in real time, this is stressful. <laughs> so if you see me choosing kind of slow, being indecisive, it's because I don't want to lose this battle. <laughs> so sometimes I edit the uh, swaps out, especially if they take forever. But I try, I try not to do too much of that. By 
By the way, if you didn't notice, I did change my battle style from set to shift during this uh, earlier part of this video. Uh, that was basically to make sure I didn't lose on any unnecessary battles. So unlike the Elite Four, the timelines are easier because the Elite Four rules don't apply to them. So you don't have to fight them on a row. Um, you don't have to, they're not going to match your level. That's the biggest thing is that they're not, they're not going to scale to your level. Um, so you could be facing level 90s, 95s ish. Uh, the highest level Pokemon is going to be, uh, the lead for the final team that you find. That's going to be level 100. So I'm already out leveling the strongest Pokemon, the highest level Pokemon that we're going to fight. Um, but yeah, it's not, it, you can, you can have it on shift which makes this a ton easier. Um, you don't have to find them all in a row and the levels don't scale. So all the timeless are significantly easier than the Elite Four just based on rule changes. Now, if you had to fight the timeless like the Elite Four, then of course they would be ridiculously hard, like insanely hard. Um, I think that would be the type of battle that uh, might make it might make this game in, not impossible but you you'd have to be very very cheesy it, it would strip your team down significantly like you'd basically be locked into like some really really overpowered stuff like uh mega Haxorus, delta Haxorus, um delta Liligant, like just only the strong stuff in the game obviously delta hydragon is very very strong it, it, you'd only be using the strongest stuff in the game. Yeah. And at this point, you haven't actually unlocked all of your Dream World abilities, so that would make it even harder. So yeah, I, I would see a lot of a spore spamming going on. I don't even know what you spore at this point, but yeah. A lot of sports spam would be happening if I had to figure out what would you do. But yeah, we're fighting somebody. Uh, I, I, I know I've been commentating. Yeah, we're fighting and this is such an indescript battle. Like, yeah, stuff happened during this battle, but it, it, it was not okay, honestly. Like, I actually played the game that N is in. I forgot what it is. I think it's black and white. Um, it's not my favorite game in the world. And wasn't my favorite person in the world. I just found him kind of weird. So, yeah, I don't really respect him as a person, as a character, as anything. I, I don't know how. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Like, yeah, we beat him on the first try. He wasn't an issue. All right, we get kind of lost here for a minute, and. The last member we have to face is Dawn. And I was actually kind of surprised that she's a member of the Timeless. But I mean, I guess when you take all the uh, facts together, all the evidence together, she kind of earns her spot. And her team is actually really, really nice, uh, except for like one member, which uh, it's not her fault. It's just because the starters of this generation, one of them sucks. I mean, you know which one it is. So we start with the grass holes as that misses, but the second one hits. So with that hitting, we're able to uh, go ahead and start setting up our combines anyway, even though we're supposed to already have one set up. Um, the reason I started out with grass holes is because I thought it might go for ice beam, but it didn't. So we're actually kind of fortunate that that one missed. Um, but yeah, we do get set up well. Uh, she's going to send out Mega Frost last. Unfortunately, Mega Frost Slash is a physical tank, not a special tank. So we're able to just go ahead and snipe it down. Then she's going to send out her Infernate, which is going to set up, which is a mistake. So we're going to one-shot it. And Poppy is going to come out. However, we do have super effective Moonblast, and it's going to miss its Fire Blast. That's unfortunate. That was a 15% chance to miss. Torterra is the worst Pokemon on this team that I was alluding to before. It doesn't even resist my Giga Drain, so I'm able to hit that it, it without it if I want to. I'm really just going to go for uh, Moonblast twice. 
get the kid on it. We're at level 103 now. And then she's gonna send back out in part one. And it's gonna get hit by its own stealth rock. We're gonna hit it with Giga Drain because it's neutrally effective. Water still is such a good typing, by the way. It's just the mid typing. That is why Delta half is very good. And then finally it's gonna send out Dialga. The only thing I can use against it is uh, Moonblast, so obviously we're just gonna hit twice with that. As long as he does heal it. He goes for Bloke Up, doing no damage to us, so we end this fight with perfect health. Yeah. Dawn had actually a, a decent team. It's just the setup moves took too long for it. Like, Dialga had to set up. Everything had to set up. Infernic could have dealt some damage, but it chose to set up too. If everything wasn't setting up against me, yeah. Megalian could have had a harder time. But you can see my beginning of stats here and it smooths. And my remaining PP, which is getting kind of on the low side, but we're going to push anyway. Because honestly, if I set up enough, I should be one shot and everything. So here's the leader of the timeless, Trainer Red. And yeah. Obviously, these was level 100 Pikachu, but we resist it. So we're going to go for Calm Mind, and we're going to Mega Evolve, just in case it wants to use uh, Thunder Wave on us. It does have Hidden Power something super effective, so we do need to Grass Whistle it very quickly. Hopefully it doesn't wake up and kill us, because um, I'm like 99% sure it's using uh, Light Ball. I choose here to go for the Giga Drain, that was probably smart. However, I'm not able to, I'm not going to be able to sweep because of that, so I do have to swap out with something else. Uh, Flygon is the designated hitter against uh, anything that's four times equal to rock, obviously, so we're going to use Rock Slide. And it's going to send in Blastoise. Obviously, we don't get hit by a Blizzard or something, so we're going to swap into, and I don't think he has Blizzard, by the way. I think it probably has high beam. I think they would have fixed the, the movesets from uh, golden silver version. But regardless, we're gonna switch back, switch back into Nagani. We do get to sleep, so we're able to set up. And this is what the Blastoise is gonna be doing. It's gonna be using Haze against us. So we have to be a little bit mindful of that because we want to set up against it but it's only going to sleep for like maybe one two things at a time like you see it's awake and it hazes so i'm just in a predicament here where i'm trying to set up and every time i get set up it wakes up and it hazes boom problem so what i do this time is i calm mind up once then i put it to sleep He's gonna calm mind up again so I can keep that stat. And then I Giga Drain it. And by doing that, I'm able to get fully set up, or at least plus two set up before it hazes me. Now we're gonna swap over because we're having PP issues. We're gonna swap over. Oh, we're not gonna move blast it. I thought we were gonna move blast it. We're gonna. Oh, yeah, Insomnia. I was like, I was pretty sure I didn't think it was going to sleep, I don't know why. We're going to use Online a couple more times. Because we do have all the special defense in the world right now. Get hit by Side Shock. That was this move I was actually scared of when I was fighting this thing. Because I was like, it's got to have Side Shock, right? And then, yeah. I'm kind of scared of this guy because neither of my moves actually hit it very well. And instead, he's just going to go for Solar Beam instead of Sludge Bomb. And because of that, we're able to finish this off. And yeah, a little bit of suspense. Ooh, do I try to get it again? No need. With level 104. Oh, actually, we weren't done. 
Sorry, false alarm. False alarm there. Yeah, we should be able to get you drain. Snow Rock down. Or I could go for a stupid risk instead of you get draining it. Surviving on 2 HP. Getting most of my HP back. And parallel paralysis doesn't really screw us over. So despite my stupid mistake, we're able to win this battle. And that's all the time is for you. So now you, I'm going to get a phone call from Orion. He's going to tell me to go meet him at the gym about his rushy ram. That is going to be the pathway that we need to take to finally get rock climb. That's been our primary goal since the main game ended and we got into post game is to find rock climb. Because rock climb opens up the rest of the game for us, basically. Um, now, the other things we need to do are we need to go to uh, Holon, which in order to do that, we need to go help out the scientists over in Roggen Town or the town, Coral Town. So we had we could have done that during the regular game, but we wait until the post game and do it is fine. Um, and then there's some other places that we can go, um, but. That'll all come in time. We will work our way through the post game because it is a very extensive post game. There's a lot of story left on the bone here. So the post game is kind of like you're kind of at the two thirds point by the time you get to the start of the post game. I saw I would say so. Yeah, we got more to do. We got more to do. But if you've enjoyed this video, if you've liked it, don't forget hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, like button for sure. Like, even if you don't want to subscribe, just hit the like button. That'll help out my algorithms a ton. Uh, and that's all I got for you. Scroll out. Peace.